Last video, I used William Porter's uh, uh, book to make this uh, cyclodial gear cutter. And I just now finished using that cutter to make this center wheel for a clock that I'm working on. I used one of the many uh, methods that uh, W.R. Smith uh, uh, presents in his uh, many books and videos. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you here today. All right, this is a book by Malcolm Wilde. It's probably like the Bible of uh, wheel cutting for clockmakers. It's got shows you the history of it, and there's all kinds of good stuff in there uh, uh, for wheel cutting and stuff. This one here with W.R. Smith, though, this picture of that Sherline lathe all set up uh, to cut a wheel right there in place on the lathe without even transferring the uh, gear blank. I like that. So. Uh, uh, I built that some time ago and uh, <clears throat> I made a few a, l a little bit of a change to it. I cut this gear with it, uh, but you'll see on mine uh, I, I put a CNC rotary table on it and the Z axis has also got a stepper motor on it. So I'm cutting it with CNC, but at one time I did use it with that index plate. I'll show you the index plate that I made and I'll use the index plate when I cut the uh, lantern pinion for this gear. Uh, but uh, Let's see. Uh, let's take a look here, and uh, I'll show you the uh, show show you it all in motion, uh, cutting the gear right here now. Well, there's the setup, and uh, you can see down there uh, to the right uh, that's the rotary table with the stepper motor on it, and to the left you can see the z-axis is run on a stepper motor there. What you can't see is is a computer screen off to the left, and I'm running Mach three and I'm controlling the cuts with uh, with Mach 3. It's a good way to cut, uh, cut gears, I like it. Uh, having the motor on the uh, uh, on the vertical slide like that, it's a little bit heavy, but with the locks that you put in there to lock it before you start cutting, it does a good job for you. All right, I started with a little bit of engraver's brass and some dicum. I've speeded this up a little bit for you, so I'm just voiceovering it now. So, uh, But I'm uh, making the circle. Uh, this is for the, the center wheel on a clock that I'm building. And uh, that's engraver's brass. That's a little hard, but it's I think it's 1% lead. Alright, I've got the blank over to the pan saw. I just used a little bit of wax cutting this. I'm still running it at double speed, but I'm cutting these verticals in here and uh, so that I can cut this thing out. Uh, Alright, let's, let's just take it over to the uh, sander here. Just using this sander to get it down closer to the line so the interrupted cuts on the lathe aren't as bad. Uh, just take a second here. And when we finish this, we'll be taking it over and cleaning it up here with a little bit of lacquer thinners. We're going to glue it with super glue to one of those arbors down there in the in the box. Those are super glue arbors that uh, uh, I found out about from uh, the W.R. Smith book. Uh, it's kind of like the old uh, wax uh, collets. Uh, uh, that the watchmakers use, uh, but we're going to pick one out here now. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, not that one. There you go, that one will work. I store the super glue arbors with the glue still on them from the last time I used it. That way uh, I face them off just before I use them. Don't have to worry about oxidation. And now I'm, uh, I'm cleaning out the grooves. These grooves are really important. Uh, they let the air in so that the super glue can uh, dry. All right, let's add a little super glue here. You don't want to add too much super glue. You got to be careful about that. It's uh, you don't need that much actually. You just got to make sure it's well put out around the wheel. And then I'm going to use that tailstock center, and we'll put it on our little uh, center mark and push it in. 
I don't know, uh, they say to hold it for 10 minutes, but I usually do it longer. Now, uh, <clears throat> this is a couple hours later. I'm drilling the hole here with the center drill, get it all set up. All right, so now we got the center there. Now we got the drill in there. We're opening it up big enough now so I can get my boring bar in there. I got a little boring bar. We're going to open it up to 3 16 Use it a one, two, three block to line it all up. I put my boring bar in there. All right. Still on fast here. Uh, there we go. Let's take a look at that. All right. That was the last measurement that I had to take. So we got a nice three sixteenths. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting a button center in there. And I put a drop of super glue on it just to make sure it keeps in it where it is. But it's a tight fit. But now I'm going to use the compound and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, put a new point on this just to make sure I've got the absolute center. Just a couple of passes real quick. Alright, this will be the last pass. This will get it nice and pointed up. Yeah, and we'll go over to the regular tool post. And we got to get the OD down to uh, the size according to Porter's book. You can't see the bit here, but I'm using a zero rake uh, uh, lathe bit here. Uh, brass has a tendency to want to catch, so the zero rake will get it through. These are the last few passes. And we'll check it with the dial calipers here and get the OD correct. All right, so there's our, our, our uh, gear blank all set up, ready to go. I took the motor off the back of the uh, head there because the, we're going to use a dividing. Uh, we got to divide this up so that we can cut our uh, 72 teeth into this uh, gear blank. This is a uh, uh, index plate that I made using that W.R. Smith book that I showed you at the beginning. He shows you how to make one. You don't need any special tools or anything like that to do it, uh, but it is time consuming. It takes a while to get it all done. Uh, so I'll just show, give you a look at that. I'm not going to actually use that on this to cut the, the wheel. Um, but it's got a shaft collar on there and uh, it just goes on the end like that. And then there's a little 1032 screw in there and you just tighten it up. And now it's on there good and tight. Now we this is a piece of uh, tool steel. It's got a little bit of spring to it. I'm putting it into one of the index holes now. And then I'll tighten it up. And now once this is tightened, it'll be ready to go. I'm not going to use it this time. It just it springs out and springs in. I'll use it when I build the lantern pinions though. Alright, let's hook the rotary table up. I had to build this uh, shaft collar here. Uh, it's pretty easy to line it up and just two uh, 1032 screws holding it in position now. But that will allow me to put it into a, in an expanding arbor. Oh, and I had to build this little arm for it too so that it wouldn't rotate and there's that's what it hooks to right there Now the expanding arbor This little small one here, but inside of it. It's got a, a 20 degree cone Yeah, there's the 20 degree cone and you just put it in there and it's once again a 1032 screw And you just put it into the uh, uh, there you go, and yeah, a couple of tightens and hold it with a little uh, jerry bar. And now it's in there nice and tight, and you're ready to start uh, to hook your divide, uh, your uh, rotary table up. Now there's a line there, you see that line, and then there's a line down there on that uh, expanding arbor. So you just line up the two lines, slide it in. And once again, another screw to tighten up. There we go.
Alright, so now just put a screw in here to hold the table steady and we'll be ready to divide this thing out. Just a little uh, tighten up on that screw there. There we go. I will tighten that screw back there so that it can't rotate and the rota uh, rotary table is in place. Now I've installed the vertical slide and this is the plate that holds the motor uh, you shop built. I built that in shop here and the motor and that's the uh, lock that locks the x-axis from moving once you've got your uh, position down it's locks it in place. Your motor goes on by just simply putting it over top of that uh, uh, arm there. Let's get it ready here. There we go. And it just simply goes over that. And then one screw. Tighten it up. And your head's in place. Complete with a motor drive. Uh, uh, 20, uh, a, uh, a DC motor with variable speed. Uh, ready to go. And cutter on the other end. Now we've got to line up the cutter with the center. Now my cutter won't go back any further, I don't have enough room, but I can just drop it down and then it's pretty easy to line it up. Just drop it down until it's almost touching that point and then you can just look in from the side and get uh, the x-axis where it needs to be. There you go. Now once you got it, you go back there with the uh, Allen key and lock that slide. I showed you that lock a little earlier and we'll lock the x-axis in place now so it can't move. Now we bring the, we'll bring the cutter up and uh, line the cutter up on the uh, top of the blank. Alright so there we are with our cutter up there just barely kissing off the top of that uh, wheel blank there, that gear, wheel blank. And this over here, this is the slide that uh, the the lock that locks the vertical slide uh, once you get the gear in position. We're not going to lock it now, but once we've got the gear uh, set for its cutting depth, now they recommend that you cut it uh, three time three passes with a Porter uh, design gear. That's what Porter recommends. I've got CNC equipment, so I, I do it with five passes. It's no problem for me. It's just a couple minutes longer. Uh, normally with a store-bought cutter, you set it to depth uh, and then just cut it with a single pass. And these are the last few passes here. We'll take it over and uh, heat it up off of the lathe. And just using a propane torch. A little tap with a uh, brass hammer. There we go. Uh, all done. Now we're just kind of running it on. I got a piece of sandpaper on a piece of glass and just flattening it out so that we can take a look at it and see how it came out. So there we go, that's flat. Let's take a look at it. There you go. There's a quick look at what it looks like. Well, I want to thank you for watching the, uh, the tooth cutting on this uh, clock wheel that I'm working on. And uh, I just let you know that I uh, just used this John Wilder crossing template and I crossed out that wheel and uh, still got a little more work to do on it but uh, I used a piercing saw and that's going to be the subject of my next video. I hope to see you then and have a nice day. Bye now.